Hello, this is O from Fox and Moon Tea, and today I'd like to share with you an age-old tradition in tea practice from China, which is having tea pets alongside you during your tea practice. Tea pets have a lot of great character, and this tradition goes back to the late 1200s in the Yuan Dynasty, and it is thought that tea pets will bring prosperity your way if you share your tea with them. And they're also great great fun to have alongside you during your tea practice. So this particular character is Liu Hai, which is the three-footed toad. And I love how playful he looks and how much animation he has in his eyes. There are many different tea pets out there and traditionally they're made with yixing clay, which this one is. And so today I'm going to prepare one of my favorite rock oolongs from Wuishan, which is the Da Hong Pao, which traditionally has a very, um, this one's actually a, a mid, mid roast in the scale of roasting, but it has a lovely chocolatey flavor to it and a raisiny aspect. And we'll see if my tea pet also enjoys this tea. So we'll let that steep for about a minute and a half. So the other thing I'd like to share with you about tea pets um, from my own personal experience is that in sharing my tea with a tea pet, I feel like I'm also extending appreciation to nature and its role in tea and that I'm, I'm giving back to nature in my enjoyment with tea so that they can also enjoy it alongside me. So this pot that I'm brewing in is also a Yixing pot. And as you know, um, the pots that you use for your tea preparation can really affect the flavor of the tea. And in general, uh, for Yixing pots, it's particularly well suited for oolongs and pourers. And these pots, they work kind of similarly to a cast iron skillet, if you're familiar with cast iron skillets, where if, whereby if you use the same tea in the pot for years, it starts to absorb the flavor of that tea. And in one of my tea sourcing trips to China, I got to try a teapot that had been seasoned for hundreds of years with one particular tea, and we were able to brew it just with water, with no additional leaves, and we got the tea flavor from the pot, which was pretty amazing. So you generally, for Yixing uh, pots, you dedicate one particular tea to it, and the color of the clay tends to mirror the oxidation level of the tea that you're using. So the Da Hong Pao, as you saw, was a pretty, pretty dark oxidized leaf, and so I am using this darker Yixing pot for that. So I'm going to quickly bathe my tea pet. And generally, you usually use the first um, quick pour off of your tea for the tea pet. But I'm actually going to enjoy this first pour myself as well because I can't bear to waste <laughs> this oolong. I love this oolong so much. And then you could also brush your tea pet, give it some love. Another interesting aspect of certain tea pets is that the rate of evaporation that you see on the surface should indicate how long to let the next steeping go for. Now I'm not re-steeping the tea right now, so I'm not using it in that way, but you can for some of the tea pets and particularly the ones that are with Yixing tea. I'm sorry, with Yixing clay. So another tea pet that I'd like to share with you is this persimmon. So this one's a little more modern of a design. It's made with a resin but this one has a trick up its sleeve and I'm actually going to use hot water for the next preparations because I'm going to enjoy that tea I just brewed. So when you pour your hot tea over this tea pet, it turns this lovely golden color and then you can see it evaporate and change color and reset to the orange. So that's a really fun kind of magical transformation that you can enjoy with this particular tea pet and there's a lot of them out there that have fun tricks that they do. And then the last tea pet I'd like to share with you 
and all the tea pets that I'm sharing today are, are kind of along the lines of the season. We are now in October and the fall equinox, so enjoying the kind of like mysterious time of the year and things that are between realms of the world and not quite explained and these these creatures bring that to mind for me. So for this time of year I've chosen the pumpkin and frog and this frog has really great detail on him. I'm not sure if you can see it through this camera but he's got back legs and really cute cute beady eyes. And this guy, if you get the temperature right, he actually does a, a water shoot. <laughs> Looks like he's not quite cold enough. So this particular one, the trick is that you need to chill this tea pet for about 10 minutes in cold water before you brew your tea and then use the, the warm tea on the surface and then it should shoot. And those are the tea pets that I would like to share with you today. And you can bring one of your own tea pets home at foxandmoontea.com. Thanks for joining us.